Chapter 19. You're so talented. Commences with a quote by Oswald Chambers. We have the idea that we can dedicate our gifts to God. However, you cannot dedicate what is not yours. It's no exaggeration to say that thousands of books, articles and sermons have been written on Christ's parable of the talents in Matthew 25. It is a fountain of illustrations on achievement, success, responsibility, stewardship, service and justice. But for me, there is one crucial message that is blindingly obvious, yet rarely mentioned. I want to share it with you. But before I do, let's briefly remind ourselves of the story. A rich man was about to depart on a long journey. Before leaving, he called three servants and entrusted them each with a portion of his wealth to manage until he returned. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to the other just one, each according to their ability. Then he left. The servant with five talents worked hard to gain five more, doubling his master's wealth. The one with two talents did the same. The servant who was entrusted with a single talent knew that his master was a hard man, so he buried the talent in the ground to keep it safe. After a long time, the master returned and called his servants to give an account of the talents he had entrusted them with. The first servant presented the ten talents and was praised and justly rewarded. The second servant received similar blessings. However, the third servant was reprimanded for his inactivity and the original talent was taken from him and given to the servant with ten. The unfaithful servant was then thrown out into the darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what's the crucial point that is so rarely mentioned? Is it to do with what the talents represent in our lives? Money or abilities or spiritual gifts or businesses or assets? No. Is it the answer to the question of why the master gave the one buried talent to the servant who already had ten and not to the servant who had been equally faithful but only had four? No. Is it a hidden message that Jesus was trying to give about exactly how long he would be away before returning again to earth? No. Then is it something about the importance of being excellent stewards with the blessings that God entrusts us with? No. In fact, it is something very simple. The talents are never ours. They remain wholly, solely and absolutely the property of the Master. Our businesses, our careers, and our abilities are talents that God has entrusted to us to manage for Him. So if the talents are never ours, then the profits and praises that come from managing those talents are never ours either. We are simply called to be servants, called to faithfully manage the talents, the profits, and the praise for the Master. They are not to be used for making us more of anything, but solely for making God more. Even when we sweat and toil and study and sacrifice and train ourselves to improve or double the talents, they are still not ours. They are, we are, His. 100%. So when the Master returns, how will He find me? Will I be ready to joyfully return the talents to Him with interest? Or will He find me with a hoard of talents and interest stored up in my own barn? Am I looking forward to the Master's return so I can show him the results of his talents that he has entrusted to me? Or will I be just a little put out when he reminds me whose talents they are? And what about before the Master returns? Today. Am I treating the talents, the profits, the interest and the praise as mine? Or am I diligently giving all the glory to the owner? How am I using my time, my energy, my voice, my assets and my money? I think I just used the word my five too many times. 